Abracadabra, make the door open. I'm sorry, boss. Uh, your face was in the shadows. Hey, you look upset, Murchie. This stupid bow keeps falling off. But you don't need a bow in your costume anyway. Hey, is the house full, honey? Completely not bad for Wednesday night. You're not bad any night, sweetheart. A woman like you is breathtaking on a Wednesday or a Friday night. Stop being fresh. I mean it. Every night, your eyes look more enticing. Will you please get lost? Someone will tell Rory about us, and he doesn't like me to talk to the clients. Well, to the clients, no, but you're forgetting that I run the Devil's Inn. Not to the clients, nor the manager. You win, but don't forget don't that... Don't you forget that Angela's waiting for you. Now, go on. Well, but... But look, tell him that after he finishes his show, I'd like to see you two for a minute in my office about an urgent matter. I'll tell him. Honey, I'll be in the office, huh? Es mi destino, mi vida así. Triste agonía viví sin ti. Tu 
muchacha de mis sueños se parece mucho a ti. Tiene la misma sonrisa de tus labios de rubí. Si te hubieran dibujado no serías tan igual. Aunque para ser sincero tú me gustas mucho más. La muchacha de mis sueños muy loquita está por mí. Cuando yo le pido un beso, ella me regala a mí. En eso no te pareces, tú no te dejas besar. Anda, ven, dame un besito, ya no te hagas el rogar. Do you want another whiskey? No, thanks. We're making money tonight. Yes, sir, you can't complain about this crowd. La muchacha de mis sueños, muy loquita, está por mí. Cuando yo le pido un beso, ella me regala a mí. En eso no te pareces, tú no te dejas besar. Anda, ven, dame un besito, ya no te hagas del rodo. you want to talk to us about, eh? I got some real good news for you. You mean... Tomorrow night, your late grandfather's will is going to be read, Marchie. And his lawyer sent me a telegram today asking that we four be present. Oh, golly, do you think that he's left us something? I think so, but he said that the heirs are to get there earlier than 12 o'clock. Anyone who is late will lose the rights to the money that might be left to him. Oh, dear. Now is when the difficulties start. I get so frightened in that old house with not one electric light in the place. And we don't use them here except in the places that are indispensable. But you know your godfather. He was just a big cuckoo. You must admit it. I'd say he was batty. He founded this club to use as a plaything, that's all. And we had a job on our hands trying to get the old goat to take in clients. Yes, it's true. How I remember the screwball things he did. Why, he'd come to this place alone. And he'd put his derby on the hat check shelf. Then he ticketed it so it wouldn't get lost. And he named this joint the Devil's Inn, too and made you two put on these costumes because he said he wanted to get used to the heat for later on. Well, anyway, we're due tomorrow at the Red House earlier than 12 o'clock, right? Exactly, my boy. Fine, that's all there is to say. You won't be frightened going with me, will you? No, why should I? But just the same, I... Uh... Uh, just remember the money you're going to get. It'll make you a lot braver. Believe me, I, I never imagined that old Timothy would think of including me when he wrote his will. Why, I think it was normal, don't you? You were the family doctor for years. Yes, but but when he drew his last breath, the man looked at me with such a stare that it chilled me to the bone, I tell you. <laughs> yes, sir, what a stare. But, you know, there's something that has me wondering. What caused Timothy's death? You mean, you don't know why he died? You were at his bedside. What do you mean I was... Oh, that's right, I was. Well, frankly, I really can't remember. You see, he had so many chills and aches that that he had me completely befuddled. <laughs> uh, Timothy isn't here, I imagine. You were told that he expired a few days ago. Uh, that's why I said he wasn't here. Tell me, who's supposed to give me the inheritance? Why don't you go talk to the estate's administrator? You can ask him. Doctor, how are you? As always, I'm at your service, Amelia. How are you, my dear Peter? Fine, thank you. And you? Well, I'm quite anxious to get my hands on my inheritance. There are lots of things I need to buy. How much was it in all, if I'm not too bold? When all the other heirs arrive, the lawyer will read the will. One moment, you. One moment. What other heirs? 
Listen, I'm the only heir, and don't you doubt it. I was his fiancé for 32 years. Ah, oh, I was so pure and so faithful. His only adoration, I only brought him joy. He loved Amelia. You know that's true. Oh, that's true. Here's Amelia. Mulehead, he called her as a term of endearment. <laughs> <laughs> I was aware that he called you Mulehead, too. <laughs> but you see, in Mr. Humphrey's last will, he said... Oh, forget it, can't you? Just forget the whole thing. You give me the inheritance as I ask, and I'll kick you back 10000 It's that easy. I hope you'll agree, Doctor. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I don't. Because, you see, I'm one of the heirs also. You? Mm -hmm. He named you, too? Why would he? Timothy was your victim. I'm gonna sue you for libel, Mulehead. Timothy died simply because it was written, that's all. Written in your prescription, you quack. Uh, good evening. We came to hear old Timothy's will read. Come on in. Come on. There's no reason to be afraid. Come on. <gasps> I gotta go. Hey, come back here. She's just scared to come into this house. She might feel scared now. Later on, she'll die of fright. <gasps> She's only kidding. Come on. Well, hello, everybody. Say hello. What? I, I wasn't listening. Say something to the others. Uh, I, I'm afraid I, I can't uh, speak right now. She's just feeling nervous. I'm sorry. I imagine you all know her name, though. This is... I know her. She's Mercedes-Benz Raddington. Right? I've already had the pleasure of meeting her. So have I. Now, young man, who are you? Rory Baxter. I'm glad to meet you. You see, Mechie and I are engaged. And you two are talking to Dr. Hippocrates Pining. I was old Timothy's doctor and good friend, too. Too bad I couldn't save the old man. <laughs> and this stunning lady is... Timothy adored me until the day that he died. Just call me Amelia. Uh, well, it certainly is a pleasure. And you know, uh, I've heard stories about you. Uh, from my godfather, Timothy, that is. <laughs> Oh, Rory, I can feel my legs melting like candles. Please be sensible, Reggie. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The time limit is almost up. The hour is drawing near. How many more heirs are coming? There won't be enough money to go around. You are not allowed to speak. Good evening. We're on time. It's not past midnight. The only important date is the date that we keep with death. Such a sweet lady. I'm really sorry that we're late, but the cloudburst was so violent that I had to come along at a crawl. No one asked you to speak. Sit down. Timothy Humphrey Humphreys. I now will begin reading. <coughs> Denise, bless you. Denise, for heaven's sakes, what does that mean? I was trying to say the end. I'm sorry, these papers are all turned around. <coughs> With George Rooker as witness on the 13th no, May no, of March. No, 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 no. Who wants to hear all that junk? The details, the details. How much did he leave? Whom did he leave it to? How did he leave it? And why did he leave it? Hmm? Take it or leave it. I'll take it. No one asks you to speak. <coughs> I leave my old red house, as I do the locale known as the Devil's Inn, that was also my property, to my godchild, that radiant young lady, Mercedes-Benz Raddington. Just a second. <coughs> Did I hear you right? 
It's for me? This house here? The devil's in, too? Do you think I deserve it all? You deserve the devil's in, this house, and all that goes with it. But golly, it's too much. I'm just about to faint. Shove over and let me faint. You're making a scene. You can faint when this is all done. Let me know when it's all right, too. Please go on now. You've been doing fine so far. <clears throat> the rest of my fortune, which as you all guessed, comes to six million. That is, give or take, a, a few bucks here, a few bucks there. I propose that it be handed to one of the following persons that are listed here. Amelia Fuchsia, my fiancé. How are things with you, Mulehead? I'm not feeling so good, Timothy, dear. I began to cry when I heard about your death. Rory Baxter, an extremely delightful young man whose character was much better than his voice. Uh, he never was a liar. Uh... Angela Orchard, a real creeping vine when she was around me, but I never gave her a tumble. That old blabbermouth, imagine saying that I tried to. Matthew Silvertone, the manager of the Devil's Inn. He has the personality of a fink, and as a manager, he'd make a good boot black. Peter Sultan, my secretary. In spite of his last name, he's a simple buffoon. He was always pilfering my till, but he didn't get much. Aha! Uh -huh. So you were trying to get your greasy little fingers on our inheritance, isn't that so? They found you out. Hippocrates Pining, my doctor. Nevertheless, he couldn't tell the difference between a grease gun and a syringe. Right, Doc? I might not know too much, but you're dead and buried, and your doctor's having fun, so who's right? <laughs> and finally, Diana O'Leary, my housekeeper, who also filched everything she could get her hands on, but it wasn't much. But in order to have any right to the inheritance, the ones I cited, We'll remain here in the old red house during three consecutive nights. The period starts tonight, and they are to stay here from 12 o'clock till sunrise. Here in my mansion, they will think about their sins the first two nights and pray for my soul. During the third night, they will look for the aforementioned millions which I personally hid. Someplace right here in the house, they will be the property of whoever finds them with one condition that they shall give half the fortune before the notary public to my godchild, whom you all know as Mercedes Benz Raddington. And now I'd like to say that you have heard the most important details of the will. What do you mean, Will? He was just laughing at us. He wants us to meditate on our sins and pray for his soul. I'm not about to. Are you going to begin thinking about your sins, Hippocrates? No, Mulehead. Got too many for that. Why, it would take me three days and three nights and I wouldn't finish. This project makes me so happy. Everyone's going to have a ball. Mercedes Benz Reddington, you got the lion's share of everything. Congratulations. I feel the same way. And I must also congratulate your young fiancé. The only thing now is that you have time to enjoy your new fortune. Life isn't worth a plug nickel. Life's a cruel story to tell. The minute one is born, he starts crying. And he cries again at the sound of death's bell. Cha-cha-cha. Come on, Emilia. Oh, good Lord. Did you hear, Rory? Life isn't worth a thing. The old doctor's raving. They just wanted to scare you. Everyone's jealous, but don't you worry about it. May I have your attention for a moment, please? I'd like to warn you that during your three nights here, I will close and lock the doors at exactly 12 o'clock. And I'll take the key along with me. I'll be back here at 6 in the morning to open up. I'll say good night now. And may the soul of Timothy Humphreys Humphreys light your way. Your rooms are all ready and it is time to retire. Would you be kind enough to follow me? One moment. I want you to wait here for me just a second. You, being the new owner of this house, have a right to the main room that is upstairs. I'll show you there in just a minute. Come on, Rory. I've got a feeling I'm getting out of this house. Look, don't be scared. Remember, you're going to get three million bucks this grand old house down the Devil's Inn. Well, I'm going to try to hold on, but I can't be sure. You're going to be all right. I can't be scared. I 
I can't be scared. I inherited three million and the devil's in two. No, I can't be scared. No, no. I can't be scared. I'm all right. in the house. I wanted to know what the orders are for tomorrow. They must be around here. You'll find them easily. I don't know where they are. You don't understand. I want to know your orders. Is there anything that you want? You just became the new owner. Yes. <sighs> yes, that's right, isn't it? I do own the house. Anything special you wanted? If you could tell me when you need your automobile, I'll get it ready. Hey, that's something. I have an automobile. Twelve cylinders, white side walls, a large spotlight, and a phone in the back seat. Do you mean it? And 400 horses as well. Plenty. The only trouble is I have whore horses, and there are too many anyway. They'll be sold. It's horsepower that I was referring to. The car is drawn by horses. Why, I thought it was new. Let's forget the whole thing now. Are you going to need it in the morning early? No, I don't think so. It's fun to ride in a taxi. I understand, just as you say. It was so nice to hear, I understand, just as you say. I'm ready for you now, ma'am. Permit me to accompany you to your bedroom. I, uh, don't feel at all tired right now. I know what's wrong. I will make you tired. You need to rest. Your spirit needs to separate itself from you so that your body can die for a few hours. Come along. <gasps> We're being followed. Shadows. The red house is the house of shadows. Come. This is your room here. It is the most elegant and the merriest of all of them. The mer... The merriest? The deceased master used this one before he was called to the great beyond. And when he was called to his master, his body was laid in state right here in this room. But he doesn't come to sleep here. I mean, not anymore. No, now he rests in another world. Well... And you should rest also. Rest, she says. That'll be easy. Stupid little coop, that 
soul, you scared me to death! <laughs> It makes me very sad to see that worried look on your face. Can I be of any help, young man? Thank you for saying young man, but I'm worried about something. I began thinking earlier, and it seems there are too many heirs in this old house. Too much ambition in this mansion. I don't know, I'm only... Yes, you're just a poor fool, doctor. You don't have to explain that. I say, hey, what do you mean by making such remarks? Well, you're a poor fish, which is the same thing. Oh? Not only am I smart, I'm a nice guy. How about the rest? Who can guarantee us that among the other heirs in this house, there isn't one who thinks he deserves more? And decide to get rid of all the roadblocks. And why do you say roadblocks? Roadblocks. Uh, just imagine for a second that you awaken in ten pieces. Your intestines are hanging in the corner from a nail. Your brains on top of the bureau. And your eyes laying there on the floor. Oh. To continue, your blood staining the ceiling. And your heart, Doc, together with other vital organs, is in the corner, wrapped in a blanket. How about it? Please. Do me a favor, young man. Couldn't, couldn't you talk about something prettier, another uh, example? Well, let's imagine that I'm the one that's been cut to pieces. Uh, now that's another thing again. I prefer it like that. Let's talk about you. Well then, the small details don't postpone the funeral. I mean that any one of us, including you, could be the one. Those are the brutal facts, Doctor. No, no, and no. Not any one of us. They might just get to you. But look, I was trying to say that the unexplained disappearance of any one of the heirs here could be a clear indication that there is someone in this house who wants us to disappear, Doc. Just you! Just you! No, we'd all disappear, I assure you, Doctor. I want to recommend that you don't confide in anyone and be alert. See what I mean? Ah. The guy you think is your best friend, Doctor, could be the one who wants to give you this. Cut your throat, but don't you worry about it. You see, I'll watch out for you. You... ba 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 but, but, My name's not Baba, Doctor. But, You're confused. But I was beginning to say that you shouldn't bother about now, it. Now, look, it's no bother at all. I'm going to do it. It's a pleasure to do so. It's a pleasure to do so. Oh, Lord, help me, Lord. Listen, you who are yes, the Yes, yes, that's uh, right. Talk uh, to the Lord uh, and tell him to watch out for your soul. You'll be able to sleep like a little child. We can have uh, breakfast together. You'd like uh, that, I'll bet. Uh, I'll call you when the uh, lawyer comes in. You want your eggs sunny side up? Fried ham, too? Well, fry ham, then. Is that all that you were trying to say? Why? I don't understand, Doc. You and I have breakfast together tomorrow? Yes, that's right, sir. Oh. The trouble with you, Doc, is you spook too easily. Are you people looking for something? Has anything happened? Yes. 
Someone tried to kill my fiance, and she's the principal heir. Would you please be so kind as to tell me what's going on? But how should I know that, young man? Merchie, it could have been a nightmare, couldn't it? Because sometimes one dreams things, especially after a heavy supper. You've no head at all. There's a big blade in my bed there. Do you think I stuck it there? She told us the truth. That's a murderous looking dagger. She's lucky she wasn't in bed or she'd have been dead. Dear me, dear me. Oh, dear me. There are spooks here. Well, I'm not taking any chances. They're not fooling around. And I'd hate to end up like a pincushion. It's clear that there's a criminal in this house and he has to be caught. And I'm going to catch him. No, Rory, please don't. Look, baby, I can handle this. We'll say good night now. We're very grateful for your interest. But Matchy has to try to rest now. In peace, I trust. Honey, go lie down a while. Lie down? I'm not crazy. I'll be right here at your side. Look, even if a whole regiment and a general were here, I wouldn't go to bed. I don't like being a target. But tomorrow when we go back to town, the very first thing I'll do is find a person who'll watch over you the two nights we have to go. I only trust you. I don't want to be looked after by someone else. Now, don't worry, dear. We have to find that criminal. He tried to murder you. I'm going to hire a detective. They'll raise objections. Look, the rest aren't my matter. We're protecting you. The agency will have their man at the club tonight so that later they can join us. Let them protest. All this horror and staying up late. And I've still got to go to work tomorrow. In two or three days, all this is going to be yours. And you'll be their boss then. You'll be rich. Get your hands up now. One moment, Sonny. You can't attack me like that. 
Aren't there any guarantees of a man on duty? This is a country of free people. What are you talking about? This is my dressing room. You mean, in that case, you're Rory Baxter, right? Sure. Ah, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, I'm proud to shake your hand. Oh, drop your hands or you'll be stopping a bullet, young man. Tell this bird dog to stop bothering me. Be polite, can't you? We don't need pistols, so stop playing. Now for the introductions. I'm Diogenes Hamis. I'm a great private eye. Our services are very discreet, rapid, and effective. In crimes of more than one corpse, special prices. And now, you help me find the body, and I'll capture the criminal. <laughs> and set aside the cell, hmm? Well, now I'm going to make another introduction. This one is my helper, and his name is Lester Pester. Lester doesn't work very hard. Ah, but he sure can putter. That is Pester. <laughs> well, you're the detective that I asked for from the agency, right? And what a detective they sent you. Mm, I'm not one to blow my horn because you'd say I'm vituperous. But why not ask my sergeant? Oh, he's a bulldog. There's nothing more I can say. Did you hear? He's not licking my boots. He says what he thinks. And although I pay the sergeant's salary, he's very honest. And now tell me, is this a serious matter? Are you in hot water? Are you in trouble? I want you to speak out. I draw out facts. You draw up facts? Yeah, but the facts have to taste good. Well, maybe you can begin telling me why you had to mess up this room. I'll be frank. I don't know who you are. So I thought I'd better find out what I could. I was spying to learn the facts. When I work on a case, I spy. That's the only way. And I find lots of facts, too. I don't understand you. Do you have a girlfriend? Don't think about it. Tell me now. Do you? Certainly I do. See? Did you hear that, Sergeant? He has a girl. You're just fabulous, Chief. No, no, no compliments till I finish. I've got to show them that I'm humble. Your girlfriend's name is Merchie. Am I right? Answer right away. Who told you so? Ha, ah, there are some brains that use radar, and I own that kind of brain. There's nothing I don't find out. Hmm. I love you, Rory. Your name is Merchie. Hmm. Well, how about it? Is your name Merchie? Or isn't it, Merchie? You make me feel proud, Chief. I'm fortunate to be your assistant. Gracias. I feel that I have proven that I know all the facts. And a man who does that is a smart investigator. So now you just can't refuse to give me your case. No, and as a matter of fact, this whole sordid case revolves around my fiancé. Ah, then you've been cheated. What do you mean, I've been cheated? Then you. You have cheated on her. That's foolishness. Let me speak. Simmer down. Don't say nothing. My great brain is working hard. That light tapping upon the door indicates. You know what? What? That the knocker's trying to get inside. It's always like that. It never fails. I know, because I watch it. Go ahead. Tell him to come in. You can come in. Will you tell me what's going on here? What's this junk? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Rory Baxter. I've never seen such sloppiness. Who is this penguin here with a ten-inch tongue? <gasps> Who do you think you are? Put your hands up. You go jump in the lake. Take it easy, Matchy. Honey, this is the detective I hired to watch over you. You must have guessed that this lady was my fiancée. Yes, yeah, she made that clear. All broad starts spotting off that way when they're in front of their husbands or with their fiancés. Did you hear? He called me a broad, Rory. I think you're discourteous. You win. In that case, I retract what I said. And I'm not a penguin. I retract that, too. Diogenes Hamis is a gentleman lady. Well, then, ask any questions you think necessary so that you can do your work efficiently. In just a moment. I have my reasons, though. Go ahead now. Now then, miss, would you state your name, if you please? Mercedes-Benz Reddington. What's your horsepower? I mean, your age. I'm 22. Are you single or are you not single? I said, miss, or didn't you hear that? Yes, but are you single or are you not single? Because lots of girls are as good as single, even though they've gone to the altar. Just a moment there, Hamas. All these questions you're asking don't have the slightest bearing on the case. You'll be interested in knowing something else. She's about to inherit a great fortune. Ah, in that case, by clear deduction, you're gonna marry this innocent little girl. Because money will make your life easier. <laughs> ah, man, are you cool. Stop casting insults around and listen. Last night they tried to murder her. Why do you think you've been called in? I want you to protect her and find the criminal. Now, don't you worry, Sonny. Just as you said, I'll find the girl and protect the criminal. It's the other way around. You protect the girl and find the criminal. Besides that, he wore a hood. So wearing a hood? That's right. I need details. Did you see his nose? His mustache? How would I know about that? He was wearing a hood. Guys wearing hoods have noses and they have mustaches. But under their masks? Ah, I forgot. Well, look, we better go because it's late. On the way, I'll give you more details. 
Sergeant, you cover our retreat. Coffee is served. And just in time. All this talk about the killer has me depressed. And since I didn't bring any brandy, I, I need a little something to stimulate me. I feel all right, but I think I'll have a little of that medicine you prescribed. I told you to drink it slow, but it goes down just as fast when you're on your knees as when you're sitting down. You mean it? Oh, how silly I am. I'll say. Uh, it's getting close to 12. If Miss Mercedes and Mr. Baxter don't get here... I hope they don't get here. It's Diana. Diana? Her mama was scared by an ogre. She's the housekeeper. <laughs> they forgot to stick a stake in her heart when they buried her. Look, she won't hurt you. Mm, well, I... Uh, okay, uh, come uh, on. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Permit me to introduce Mr. Diogenes Hammes, a famous detective. I've got a few things to add. I'm Diogenes Hammes, the greatest private eye. Our service is discreet and rapid, too. But another thing, it's only for cash. Pay attention. I have made sure that all the heirs are present, so I'll be going. You are to remain in your rooms all night long, and you are not to try to find the treasure. Think about your sins and rest. As you know, those are old Timothy's orders. One moment there, Curly. I haven't seen no Timothy around. I'm not going to budge until I meet the man personally. So you get him up here front and center, A, eh? But that means right now, not tomorrow. Because I want to see him. You don't understand. Timothy died a month ago, sir. Eh? <laughs> you mean there's a dead body here and I didn't know about it? No, you don't. All you live bodies are going to stay right in this house until I can arrest the guilty party. That's the law. He's the one who left us the inheritance. Understand? Eh? You mean... I get you now, he wasn't murdered. He only died because he volunteered to. Yes, sir, exactly. <laughs> ah, get the picture. The key, if you please. I'll be here in the morning. And now I'd like to wish you all good night. Sleep well. You'll all use the same room as you used last night. Well, I'm going to try to get some rest. Why not come along, Angela? Good idea. Come along, Doctor. Well, I don't know. I'm not very tired because I slept late in the morning. None of that. Don't forget, Doctor, you're my friend. And I'd like to know that you're near so you can close up. Golly, what is it that I should close up? The lid on my coffin. Is there anything I can do for you now? No, thanks anyway. Good night. Have a good rest. Good night, good night. Good night. I think I'll say good night now. Fine, Diana. Good night to you, sir. God grant that tomorrow I may say good morning to you. <laughs> and I hope he returns you to your coffin, Lady Goblin. Uh, no, no, Lady Diana. You've been listening to the heirs. Aren't there any that look suspicious to you? Well, my friend, I suspect all of them. They're all on the hook. I can see that something funny has to be going on here. But listen, don't you worry about it. My young brain is working 24 hours like a computer does. Don't worry. Pretty soon now, I'll get the criminal in my hands. Good luck, because I'm frightened. Who's not? Oh, oh, no. I only meant to say that it would be a good idea for us to take all kinds of precautions to eliminate danger. But look, in your room, you don't sleep with anyone else, do you? No, sir. Are you sure? Sure as can be. Well then, starting tonight, you'll sleep with the sergeant. He'll take care of you. But he won't bother you. And you? Tell me, do you sleep alone too? Naturally. Ah, well then, I'll be wanting your permission so that tonight I can go and sleep at... Hold on. You don't understand. What I meant is that I'll guard you, but it'll be from outside your door. I want to make sure you're all right. Oh, well then. And you? You got a job, so on your toes. Right, Chief. We better go now.
are you doing? You got any good reason for being here? You don't. Look, maybe you don't know it, but you better go back and lie down. Because there's a dangerous criminal walking around this place. Yeah, and you know, he could just find you here, and he might scare you. And you ain't such a bad guy. I want to be your friend. So why don't you go hit the hay? It's late. Eh? That's it. criminal? <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it honest. You walk around dressed in such dark colors and so quiet. I said, it can't. It can't be the guy. It just can't. So, put your hands up. I knew I'd get you. Cause Diogenes hammies. Don't let guys escape so easily. Now let me see. I'll put the cuffs on. I knew I'd grab you tonight. And just wait till I tell them. Uh, 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 hold this pistol for a minute. These things are hard to figure out. Uh, shirt. What color? Uh, any color. Hey, just a moment, you. I got something to tell you face to face. Now get out of there. You got two seconds to do it. Otherwise, I'll bring a torch and cut you open. Holy cow. His brains are empty. That's a nice night. Uh, I goofed. You see my chief. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Open the door! Help! Get your hair out of here! Have you seen your chief? He's disappeared. Same with Matchy. That masked man's responsible for this. <gasps> There's the chief! Chief! What's the matter? He's wounded. Don't speak to me, please. I died just a minute ago. But he's had it. It looks like this time he got hit in the head for real. What do you mean, head? He got it in the wallet. His Get wallet? Out. Well, it was a miracle, I tell you. Am I glad I like to keep my door in my suit coat? Now I got holy money. Man, I'm lucky. Now look, my fiance's disappeared. Do you mean it? Then you better call a detective right away. What are you then? I forgot. We better find her. Come on. That's what has to be cleared up. 
who locked us in and why they locked us in. That's what we're going to find out this very moment. Oh, I was scared to death. I didn't know what to do. Our next stop after this house is the booby hatch. There's no doubt about that. I'm sure you were the one who locked us in our room tonight. It's quite plain that it was he. Look, are you nuts? We all were locked in and Metchie disappeared too. You mean it. How lucky we are. Something strange is happening around here. You hired that hound dog to watch over her, didn't you, Rory? Right now, I can't make explanations. I want you all to help us find her. I'm in no mood to go around looking for a lost girl. Certainly not. Our minds are not on that. Just a moment now. Don't you know you should never ask a favor, Sonny? And besides that, hmm, what am I in the house for? Now you and my man here can go together and explore in that direction while I mosey around in there. And within ten minutes, I know that we shall find the girl. Come on. I heard you say that I was a hound dog. But I'll make you repeat that in ten minutes, hose nose. Fine, I'll set my watch. Good for you. Do you realize how lucky we are that she disappeared? Yes, there'll be three million more now. Because if she doesn't appear, then we keep her share. Yes, only I don't like what's going on here. It's my frank opinion that all this about her disappearing is a lot of skullduggery. There's more to this than meets the eye. Oh, please, get to the point you're talking in circles. I'm trying to say that there's a subterfuge. I don't understand, Doctor. Can't you be a little clearer? Yeah, give us a final draft. Uh, in that case, come here. I'm going to call some signals. This girl is only the first one. The others will be eliminated little by little. There's not anyone or anything that can save them. May God give them a merciful death. Amen. You may search, but you're not going to find the girl, you idiotic intruders. All right, I'm ready. Go in. Your victim is lying there. But I want you to try to do your job artfully. Work on her with skill. Don't be crude. Try to do it delicately. My heart is in my job, as you know. He'll do it well. He's experienced. There's a great future for him. She's not there. She's disappeared, sir. What are you saying? That's impossible. Listen, Diogenes, I think we should go and search Merchie's room. The answer just has to be there. Yeah, Chief, you've got to help us search. Light our way with your great talent. Okay, I will light your way. And down here, there's nothing that's going to help us find her. Shall we go? Right. Put your hands up high. Hey, are you crazy? Disarm those two bloodhounds, Doctor. Be glad to. Just a minute, buddy boy. What's all this business about bloodhounds? You made off with Merchie just to trick us. You wanted an excuse to search the house at your leisure. Yes, that's true. This Hammy isn't a detective at all. He's no more of a cop than I am. You better hold your tongue. I'm a lot more of a cop than you are. You don't know, but I got a diploma that says so. And I'd be glad to let you see it. Well, all right then, so you're a great detective. Why argue about small things like that? But all I know is that it's a pretty strange coincidence that our dear little Murchie's the only one who's seen a hooded man around the house. The only one that they tried to murder and the only one that they kidnapped. Isn't that true? Yes, Doctor, you're right. But aim your pistol straight ahead. So no more searching. Do you think that just because you say so, I'm going to stop looking for her? Come on, try to get past me. You and I will see about this. You're not always going to have a gun in your hand to protect you. Now look, 
Don't think you'll get away with this. You four are what I call bushwhackers, that's all. I'm gonna lock them up. I think you ought to lock them up in Murchie's room. If we're lucky, someone will do us the favor of kidnapping them, too. Come on. And if I tell you that I just don't feel like going, what'll happen? Then I'll be glad to put a bullet right between your eyes. Well, don't be mad, it was just a question. Come on, no more questions for now. March! He calls the place for now. Come on, one after another like peas in a pod. Get upstairs. Come on, you first. And you. Now you follow him. Inside. You stay put, and you better not try anything. And when the administrator gets here, he'll be told the whole sordid story. He must know what to do. Man, I've seen some heels in my time, but you take the prize. You're not only a low-down fortune hunter, you're also a fink. Quiet. A magpie is silent compared to you. Look who's mouthing off now, old rubber lips. Get lost. <laughs> Silence. What a great situation. <laughs> Diogenes Hemis gets locked in. <laughs> yep, we're batting a thousand, fellas. Here we are locked in, incommunicado, and our hands are tied, too. But it couldn't be clear. We got caught napping. And this guy, Matt, was waiting his chance, and he locked us up. And we still don't know where she is or what's happened to her. As far as she's concerned, you've got nothing to worry about. Because she's here. Sure, she's here, but she's hidden. This house is enormous. No, no, she's right here. Right here. Uh, not here in my hand. Uh, the girl is lying here on the bed. Matchy. 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 Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Why are you in here? What's the matter with you anyway? You disappeared, you know where? What's going on? Night air affecting you? When you disappeared, I came in here and you were gone. Ah, oh, but that's just nonsense, Rory. One moment, my dear young lady, and listen. On this occasion, I find it necessary to use the genius and science of Diogenes Hamis. Please, ma'am, would you try to tell me and think when you answer? Now, this is very important. In your family history, has there ever been a case of sleepwalking? I couldn't say. How old was your father at his death? Sixty-two years old. And your mother? Only six months. Wait just one second. How could she have been six months old? She died six months after father was buried. That's a horse of a different color. Another thing I'd like to know. Wait a second, Hamas. I think the important thing is to work out a plan now. Matthew just locked us in here at the point of a gun. But why, dear? He and the others say that your disappearance was only a ruse so that we could search the house tonight. I insist on making an interrogation. Can't you see I'm trying to find clues? Would you try to tell me, in your family history, if you know, was there anyone who was demented? Demented? Yeah. No. They all had lots of merit. No. Oh, what I'm trying to say... This isn't doing any good. Too many things have happened here, and you're talking nonsense. Well, the only thing that I know is that we're making tracks right now. But that's impossible, Merchie. Don't forget your inheritance. I can't use my fortune if my heart feels, Rory. All this horror. It only beats every 30 minutes now. Calm down, calm down. But we must find out what's going on. And we'd better be prepared for tomorrow. We'll put some thought to it. Me 
dijo de pronto que olvidara su cariño que no me quería engañar fue bajo del crucifijo en la torre de una iglesia cuando la luna nos alumbró entre mis brazos con ganas de retenerla pero el orgullo me lo impidió ya solo frente a la iglesia stop their game last night. Or did they search the whole house, they might have found the inheritance, too. And the manager is such a jerk that he believed all that rot about Murchie's disappearance and that she appeared later not knowing what happened to her. Yeah. They sure had him convinced, all right. He would let me put in a word. And besides, I suspect that he played a part in their plan. And tonight we're to begin the search. Just think someone's going to get the inheritance. Don't worry about it. I don't care who does find it. That inheritance is going to be ours alone. Then you got a plan? I want to hear the whole story. Come on, Matt. Okay, but you better change. It's getting near the hour. You know that Murchie and Rory are angry about what you did last night. There's nothing to worry about, because till Murchie actually possesses the inheritance, I'm the only one who's boss around this joint. Hurry, Rory, it's getting late. Did Hamas get here? Yes, about an hour ago. He's in my dressing room now. Good evening, Mr. Hammers. <laughs> There's nothing so good about it. Don't get any ideas. What's the matter? Look. Lord, help us. Just who are those men? Huh? Don't ask me. They got in here, pointed a gun at me, and took mine too. Then stood by the wall and waited. What's going on here? If your idea is to get money, I'm sorry, but there's very little. That's all I need. They won't get a cent. These men don't frighten me. I want to see your faces when I tell you that he's a detective. <laughs> Go ahead, tell them, and they'll stop being so sassy. Oh, listen to me. Say it, say it. I am famous in the underworld as a private eye. Diogenes Hermes. <laughs> no, no, they react this way because they're nervous. In this case, you can't do a thing with them. But we've got to stop this. What are you doing here? This is a friendly little visit till tomorrow morning. This is ridiculous. We're expected someplace else. We've got to go. They won't make me stay here. No, you don't. Take it easy. I don't want to hurt you. Oh, Rory, do something. If we stay trapped here, the others will win out. What are you going to do? Isn't there something you can do? You know we can't stay here. Looks like we're dead. It won't be easy to stomp on these two things here.
that you're not going to try to make us wait anymore. And midnight's the deadline. They're going to lose their rights. isn't working. It stopped. Because according to my watch, we got here six minutes late. Quiet, stupid. Well, if your watch says that, then you're six minutes late. I'm really sorry. Oh, give us a chance, can't you? Don't listen to that fool. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. But I don't care if there is an error of six minutes. Since I go by the clock that's in the house. <gasps> that's something else. Please come in. <sighs> listen, this lawyer has begun to make me suspicious. He's always on her side, and he makes no bones about it. I've got to settle a few things with you. Well, let's get at it then. Quiet down. I want you all to be silent. Now then, this is the third and last night designated in the will by Timothy Humphreys Humphreys. May he rest with God. He'll never rest in peace, the old fool. <clears throat> this is the night that you'll be allowed to search the whole house to find the inheritance that was hidden here. Since I find that all the heirs are gathered here, you may now begin to search for the money alone or together. But try to show dignity as you search. I bid you good luck. I slowed down those torpedoes and I'm going to do it to you. But hit me then, but don't wrangle the goods. Take it easy, the There's no use fighting now. Of course there isn't. This sweet girl's telling the truth. All the other heirs, like beavers after the dough, and you two jerks are going to start fighting. Why? He's right, my time's a wasting. Come on. Yeah. How about it, Chief? Eh? How about jumping into the search, too? Yeah, don't propose such things to me. Don't you know who you're talking to? Diogenes Hammies. We came here. To watch out for someone. That's the important thing. And who needs dough nowadays, Lester? It causes trouble and there's nothing good about it. Fooey. Don't say fooey, Chief. Don't you know there's lots of millions here? Eh? We can watch out for the young lady, all right. And at the same time, do some mosing around. Mm, well, well, well. But we'll mosey around carefully. And look, friend. I don't want any funny business that goes a riot between two friends, you get it? Besides, you know my character, don't you? When I'm angry at you, I can't help swearing. And you know what I'm like also? I'm a faithful old meat hound. You're on. Right-o, Chief, right-o. You all set to work? Yeah. Give me your scouts honor. All the honor you want. We'll begin now. Shut. Rory, where should we go now? Do you think that Matt and the doctor haven't already searched their rooms? There's no money here. There could be. We might find something which they overlooked. Well, it's worth a try.
fellas. Turn the lights on. Impossible. Do you mean you didn't know that Mr. Humphreys didn't have a telephone? That's right. And the worst thing is that we're all locked up in the house. Well, I'm really sorry that this occurred, but since my staying here can't help the man, my work is still unfinished. I only came to the house for that. Baby, let's go. You're a monster, and I mean it. Thank you. Since he's dead, I think we'd better go. And lock this room for now. Tomorrow, when they open the door, we can send someone to bring the police here. Yes, you're right. There's nothing to do now. Oh, Rory, I can only blame my godfather. And I'm so terrified that my legs are weak of Salome. I'm in Salome. But don't worry about it. Things will work out. tell you, Sonny, is you ain't kidding no one. I'm gonna have to stop you. Uh, uh, well, you can see I got no pistol now, but that doesn't matter. Put your hands up. Quiet down, you fool. And suppose I don't want that? You either come with me or you die. Think it over fast. I thought it over already. I'm going along. Get a move on. Get in there. I wouldn't think of it. You first, my dear sir. I said get him. <laughs> like wild beasts out on a forage. I wouldn't feel at all happy searching knowing that at any moment I could be stabbed to death. You're right, Rory. So please stay by my side. They're only destroying everything, like her tearing open those chairs there. Pretty soon they'll tear the house down. Come on. Don't be a barbarian, Matt. You're ruining the whole house. Well, stop interfering. It's not your business what I do. It's my business, Matt. It's my house. And I'm not going to let you chop it down. If I have to dynamite this house to find the inheritance, that's what I'll do. But you're not going to dynam uh, dynamite it. You think it was worth its weight in gold. Well, come on and stop me. That's Amelia. <laughs> Why, that poor old lady. I can't bear to look at her. Could she be playing a joke on us? She thinks she's a clown. What's the matter with your boss? There have been two crimes and he doesn't put in an appearance. The boss doesn't tell me where he goes. I wouldn't doubt if the murderer killed him, too. Obviously, no one knows just when he could be killed. Am I right? All of us must eventually turn to dust. If you're going to talk foolishness, you can leave. I've got 
get a strong suspicion that those two have something to do with the crimes. That's just what was in my mind also. Well, I think we better join forces. And we mustn't become separated from now on. Help me! Marjorie has fainted, Rory. Help me! Let's turn this over. There. Hurry, and bring back a glass of water. Yes, sir. Sure, she's fainted. They frightened her so. I think I'd be much happier with Frankenstein. It's just a short circuit. She'll come around in a minute. I wonder who it is. We better go find out. But it seems impossible that the door would open. It was locked up tighter than the drum. We'd better peek outside then. This gets worse as each second passes. Well, I don't believe in ghosts, and there's someone near that's very much alive. Well, let's talk inside. I'm freezing and I'm scared to death. Sergeant! Sergeant! Open the door! Open the door, Sergeant! Coming! Sir, I'm sorry, it's locked and I can't open it. You're out of your mind. How can it be locked? Come on in and see for yourself. Open up! Sergeant! Try hard to open it. It couldn't be locked. I'm sure it couldn't. The only thing I know is that... <laughs> Sounds to me like he just had it. Sergeant! 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 Open this door! Sergeant!
that he only moved to Silence, I said. Oh. In just a moment now, you're going to die. Oh, dear. I, I... And I'll die with you if we don't get smart in a hurry. <gasps> Why don't you? Yeah, but not for too long, because that guy's about to come in and he's going to cut us both into little squares. No. Yes, oh, I mean it. Be quick oh. now. you got to help me with my plan. All right, all right. I'll do anything you say. Finally, I caught you. You're not going to escape now. Man, you're out, huh? That was pretty hard, Hemi. I'll bet you crushed his skull. That's how I am when I get hot under the collar. And the stick is very easy to handle. You mean it? Try it out for size. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, but, 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 uh, 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 I'm sorry. Are you oh. trying to murder Diogenes Hammies? Oh. I told oh. you to try it out a woman, but not on my head. Oh, but I'm sorry, really. <laughs> I'm hurting and that's worse. Oh. Well, there's a job to do. Go get a rope so I can tie this guy up. Do you want him to get away? Hurry! Oh! Brian, Brian. <clears throat> it's starting to give now. It's almost open. Oh. No! It's late. So we'll finish the job we started. Listen, what's going on? It means only that we are very loath to see the heirs get the fortune that old Timothy earned. Since we suffered and labored for years in this house, we're not going to let you take what is rightfully ours. What's the matter? You two have a right to the inheritance also. We've been searching and so can you. We can search when we have you out of the way. Come along. Where to? To a quiet little place where you will die, where I can bury you all properly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sergeant, and he could be in hot water. Just a moment, you better stay here. Cause they won't hurt me. I'll make them show respect. Oh, 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 oh. Tie the knots real tight. We don't want them to get away. Tie square knots, honey, those are the best kind. Especially for a couple of squares. Matt, look, shoot, Rory. My dear. Rory, I was almost killed. Well, you don't have to fear the masked man now. Really, dear, my aim was good. Oh, Rory, you put your foot in it. That man there is innocent. He's my savior. That poor guy's a saint. Isn't he wearing a hood? What do you say, Rory? Shall I end his suffering? <gasps> Why not you drop dead? Do you think that down there I'll go, I ain't gonna suffer? Gee, <laughs> thee. Why, it's the detective. Any broken bones, Chief? Man, these stairs are too much. They gotta go. Are you wounded, Mr. Hammers? No. It was just plain luck this time, because no one ever taught you how to aim. If they had, pst, poof. And what are these clothes for? Well, you see, that guy wearing the hood was holding a pistol. He put me in a little room and locked the door. And then... Then? Then he took my clothes, and I said, it's bad manners to go around in shorts, and I ain't got none. He took them, too. Moments passed, and I was frantic trying to find clothes. I came across these and said, no, I'm getting out of here. I don't care how. Don't ask me for more explanations, because I'm mixed up just like you are. I'll explain the whole thing, Mr. Baxter. It's the lawyer. Come on, then. Tell us what happened here. What happened is just what old Timothy thought would happen here. He was sure his servants were a couple of unscrupulous scoundrels. My job was to make sure that they didn't get their hands on the money. Unfortunately, I failed to save the doctor and Amelia. These people attempted to kill me, am I right? You were the important victim, young lady. I was the one who took you from where they had you locked up. I returned you to your room. If I had arrived a second later, I'm afraid you would be dead by now. God is going to reward you, even though you are a lawyer. Uh, <clears throat> I know all the secret passageways in the house. 
and it was as easy for me to get to you as it was to unlock the door and free the uh, detective. Well, thanks a lot for all the things you've done. Guess you'll want to take care of these murder and servants here. The police know the whole story now. They'll handle the case. They'll be coming for them and the masked men, too. Oh, good Lord, let's get him before he escapes. Don't you worry about it any longer. You did a good job when you tied him up. Hold on there. You know too much. How come? All through this old house, I had spots for observing you. In this room, for example. From that painting there. Who is the man that wore the hood? The killer, in other words. Victor, the chauffeur. There, I said it earlier. The guy that knifed those two is the guilty one. How about that? This is another triumph, friends. Hammy scores once more the great private eye. Well, now then, the whole thing is cleared up. You all know what's going on, and you're all happy. And you, Sergeant, don't forget that. No, Chief. Your victory is so great that the whole country's in debt with you. Well, that's strange, because I owe so much, I'm going to the poorhouse. I'm not surprised, Hamish. <laughs> I, I still can't believe what you told us just now. Do you mean you were watching us all the time? Every moment, I assure you. You were right. The eyes are hollow. I'm going to move it to see the space behind it. Oh, <laughs> 